This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, along with Dave Riccio, and together every single Saturday, we are your KTAR car guys, helping you with your car problems. And, well, hey, you don't even have to have a car problem for us to help you. We want to pr- help you prevent having those car problems and maybe sometimes the anxiety that goes along with that. So we're here to make that all easy peasy when it comes to owning a car. So mm-hmm. you like that one, Dave? Yeah. Easy peasy. Creative today. I, well, you know, sometimes just things pop in my head, you know, and you <laughs> just got to go with it. Hey, we're this is an unscripted show, folks. We're not in here, you know, like <laughs> getting all this stuff and reading off of a teleprompter and all this stuff. We're just... We're just going with all this information that we've got stored in these gigantic brains of ours. Mm. Something like that, right, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> so whether you're driving around in your Honda or your Porsche or your your uh, 1982 Honda Jalopy or, or classic car, whatever it is, we're here to help you with uh, what are any of those whatever may ail you. Today, catalytic converters. You've got one. If you've got a car, maybe 1976 and newer, there ought to be one bolted underneath the car and part of that exhaust system. And, uh, you know, you've heard the term curiosity kills the cat. Well, mm-hmm. well cur- let's, get, let's get curious about the cat on the converter. It's, it's- but, but this curiosity won't kill this cat. Oh, oh, yeah, a no. lot of other stuff what? will. And this one, you just don't go and pick one up down to local uh, shelter and bring home a new kitty. They're a little bit. Uh, they're kind of. They're kind of more spendy. Yeah. If you think about, I mean, the number one question I get when people know what I do, they're like, "Oh, you do the car show and you own an auto repair shop." And what, what's your favorite kind of car? That's number one question I get. Number two question I get is, uh, what, "What's a catalytic converter?" I, mean, I get that all the time because I know they're in a shop. The car's in a shop, and they're not cheap. They're not giving these things away. I mean, catalytic converters aren't cheap. And if you do get a cheap one, you're going to buy it. 10 times over, you know, it'll equal the price of a good one from the start. <laughs> but uh, catalytic converters, we all got them, and it's the filter in your exhaust. It filters the exhaust before it puts it out in the, in the atmosphere. It's not like an air filter kind of, but it is a, like it's, a, it's a filter or a cleaner for the unburned fuel that's going, instead of going out the tailpipe and everyone's breathing it in, it, it converts it back to something that's not going to hurt the world. <laughs> Is that my, like my chemistry? So, something like that, Dave. Yeah, it's just it, all, all the all the ooky gooky stuff <laughs> that your it, engine, that the inefficiency of your engine burns goes through this tail goes through the catalytic converter, and it converts. There's there's precious metals in there, and it's like a honeycomb and a beehive, and a lot of surface area in there. And so everything that goes out of the exhaust is going into that catalytic converter. It's converting nitrates of oxygen it's adding oxygen it's storing i mean there's a lot of science behind it and you know my uh i hear you I, using I, chemistry I, like you know what it means no, no you didn't let me get to oh, you know, okay. high school biology i was good at it because i did it twice <laughs> <laughs> that was biology we're talking about chemistry here okay right so it's a, it's a but... it's a catalyst so that yeah. means it, it makes a chemical change without actually adding anything to to the uh exactly the whatever it is that comes out the end but uh <laughs> So yeah, they, they 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 do go bad, and it is a very you know you get these cars in, and the people that live with the check engine light on, you know they're in for their oil change. You see the check engine light, you scan the car, and then you're gonna find well the check engine's light for a catalyst efficiency code. It's an air code, and I think it's a 420. 420. 420. So I like the code number, but it doesn't. Uh, <clears throat> So anyway, but it doesn't get fixed a lot of times on well, older cars. Well, and, and, and you know that's one, where we come in because people will call and say, "How much is a catalytic converter?" And I say, "I know you're not out Christmas shopping, and I know this is not something that you know it's on the grocery list. Somebody told you you need a catalytic, you need a catalytic, converter. A catalytic converter, and oftentimes they're told that in error because there is no code that says, "Mr. Car Owner, you have a catalytic converter that has gone bad." All we can use, we use sensors, oxygen sensors. There I go again. Oxygen sensors and air fuel ratio sensors. He's a slow learner. Yeah. And my kids ought to know better, too. (laughs) Uh, The um, 
it, it uses an airflow air fuel ratio sensor or an oxygen sensor, and we measure what's happening before the catalytic converter, and we're measuring what's happening after the catalytic converter. So those two little sensors, those two workers down there, have to be telling the truth to the computer. So it's just measuring efficiency. If they're not telling the truth, that doesn't mean you have a bad catalytic converter. You could have a bad sensor. And, and that's all pre-programmed into the car's strategy, into the emissions control system of the cars, how efficient this could be. And, you know, was you know several years ago, Toyotas were the famous one. Man, those cut lights are coming on all the time. People come in and need an estimate for a catalytic converter. If you know what you're doing, you do a little research. Well, Toyota loosened up the parameters a little bit. They were a little strict. So the cure was a computer reprogram and said, well, we had that a little tight. Let's loosen it up. So they weren't having bad catalytic converters. But there are certain things that will kill the cat, so to speak. Dave? Well, yeah, one of them, <clears throat> probably the, the biggest killer of catalytic converters is a misfire from the engine. So when the engine is not running good and it's sending a lot of raw fuel down the tailpipe, well, that causes significant damage to the catalytic converter. And it doesn't take very long for it to fail. What, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at me taking a drink okay. and you can hear my eyes going back oh, down yeah. into the cup. He's so rookie. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so <clears throat> anyway, it's, uh, you know, it, it – uh, I can't even keep my train of thought today. Go, you go ahead. You do yeah, the show. That's because you guys were yabby yabbing about bicycles before the show and weren't listening to me. <laughs> so, but they're expensive. You know, we heard catalytic converters in the news several years ago because people were stealing them. Mm. And this gets into the point of they're expensive. So people were going around with a Sawzall and climbing, and Toyotas were the classic ones, and you really hoped you had a good thief. Oh yeah. You know, if you're going to get something stolen off your car, you want a good thief. If there is such a good, uh, if there is such a right. thing, because they would just climb underneath the car with a low, like a Forerunner, for example, prime candidate. Yeah. Climb underneath the sawzall. Thirty seconds, sixty seconds, you can cut one off of the car, and then the the scrapyards will give them a couple hundred bucks for them. But, yeah. But they get a couple hundred dollars in scrap value. But you go to buy a new one, it's two thousand dollars in some cases. And uh, so that was one of the one of the bigger problems with converters. But some laws have been put in place to prevent, you know, you've got to have ID, and they're just not buying the scrap. So they've they've taken the market away from, uh, you know, from the thieves. But the other things that can uh, kill the cat, so to speak, like you said, Dave, an engine misfire, and you know you have an engine misfire. Number one, when the car's not running right, but two, when your check engine light comes on, a lot of times we'll tell you. Yellow is a warning. You do need to get it checked. But if that check engine light is flashing, that means that you have an active engine misfire. And that will, the number one thing will kill the catalytic converter. That, that's pretty quick. Now, some of the other ones over time, you go into your favorite oil change guy and they got that mm. good clunk, 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 clunk. It's a four cylinder, gets four quarts, clunk, 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 clunk. There's ash in oil. You overfilling oil will kill the cat. It'll kill the catalytic converter because it's it's going to burn that and it's going to coat the coat the precious metals in the in the system and and that's another thing. And that, that noise he's making, clunk, 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 I can't even make it. That's the pumping noise of the oil pump. Yeah, we got oil guns. We don't actually pour it out of bottles too much anymore. Sometimes we do, but for the most part, we're just shooting it in. And if a guy's kind of sleeping on the job, he can he can put a little too much oil in there. You know, oil changes, and that's the other thing is oil changes. <clears throat> it's such a commodity. You know, what you know, what's the price of your oil changing? What's the price of your oil change? And because it's commodity, and they're not they're not profitable for the business. You know, it's just it's just a necessary. It's a cost of doing business. This is what we offer an oil change for. But people, they they'll do them wrong because they're a they you're not going to put the most expensive, talented guy on an oil change. I mean, some shops may some not. Shops, yeah. You know, I mean, maybe just kind of the rookie kid fresh out of school or never went to school, uh, but he had a heartbeat, so we're going to let him change oil. Some of that stuff goes on, and and so you know, I think you can do so much damage it's by slow, not. It's it's slow, slowly killing the car. Slow death by paper cut. You know what I mean? Eventually, you get enough of them, you're going to lose enough blood. Same with the car. You let somebody pra somebody practice or work on your car wrong a little bit at a time. That's that slow death by paper cut. Uh, you know, same kind of thing. But the other the other problem that people make or or or, or scenario they put themselves in, 
We always say something killed the cat. You can't just go bolt a new catalytic converter on. The typical catalytic converter, I mean, it is designed to last the life of the car. There are not necessarily wear components in there. There's nothing to wear out. So an inefficient running car, too much oil put in the car, all kinds of different things will make that catalytic converter wear out. Engine carbon buildup is a big one. When you hear your car pinging, <laughs> rattling, maybe climbing up a hill, or when the car's running hot, you used to say, oh, it's bad gas, or dieseling, they might call it. Well, that's sending an incredible amount of emissions into the catalytic converter, and that can cause premature failure. So when you have a catalytic converter problem and it does need to be replaced, you not only have to replace it, but you've got to fix the cause. The catalytic converter failure is only the symptom. For sure. Well, when we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We're talking about catalytic converters, but if you've got a window that keeps not working or your gas mileage is terrible or you've got a vibration or you've got a weird noise and you want to talk to us about it, we can help you out at 602-277-5827. You can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Honesty and integrity, it's the only option. Hi, Spencer Doucet for H&I Automotive. H is for honesty and I is for integrity. We built our business on these two principles. We opened our first shop in Mesa in 2009, and with the support from our loyal customers, we've now grown to a second state-of-the-art location in Gilbert. Two locations, same principles. Quality service at a great value, backed by an industry-leading 60-month, 60,000-mile parts and labor warranty. Check us out at hndiautomotive.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. That's our closing line, Pops. I know, Jeff. Just reinforcing that we're full service auto repair. At Kurtz Auto Repair, we do it all, including diesel. We have the passion, training, equipment, and expertise for diesel. Our techs are ASE certified for diesel and advanced diesel diagnostics. Toy hauling, horse trailering, off-roading, or work trucking, we've got you covered. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Check us out at mycarhurts.com. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. For the shy types, you can also text us at 411-923. And we know you've got questions because everyone I tell that I don't know that I'm in the auto repair business, they say, oh, what do you do when this happens? Oh, what do you do when that happens? And so everyone has automotive questions floating around in their head because something else is going on with their car or something in the back of their mind or they're facing some sort of repair or they get tired of doing the same repair over and over again. I think we had an email, Matt. Someone was struggling with an emissions uh, an EVAP code where the car was smoked and, and they can't seem to find the leak on the car. And, mm -hmm. you know, so they got a problem like that, and we could almost do 10 shows on EVAP systems. But you're running into problems out there with your car and service, and maybe you want to know more about the uh, you know the repair process and what's involved in getting these cars fixed right. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. 
You know, another good place, another good resource for people to do. And maybe there's a lot of people just joining us. Maybe you're visiting in town or, hey, you're going to be out of town. And, you don't, hey, you can't miss Matt and Dave just because you're out of town, right? You can go to the KTAR app. You can go to bumper to bumper radio dot com. Maybe, you know, maybe you just can get through the lines because these things get busy. We get a lot of questions. All the shows are on a podcast on our website, and you can go back and search for the topic. So maybe your shop tells you you need a muffler bearing. Well, go search muffler bearing. <laughs> well, you won't find. You the, won't find a show. You won't find on a show it. about Just it. Bad, but Matt and Dave uh, humor. But there might be some spark. They might say talk about spark plugs. They might talk about fuel injection cleaning. Uh, they might talk about why you need a, uh, you have a fluid leak. So you can go back and search for some of those keywords and listen to some of our shows. And then, you know, then you always want to have a conversation with the shop. Just because they say you need it, just don't say okay. You know, help me understand why I need to do this. And and, and I think a shop that we like to go out of our way to do it at Virginia Auto Service, and I know you do it at your shop too, Dave. We really want people to know what they're getting for their money. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, they have, they have no idea. If they buy a set of wheels and tires that are really pretty, they can see it. But if they buy some gonculator valve, they don't know what that is. They don't yeah. know what that fixes. And yeah. uh, I don't either because gonculator is made up. But uh, we've got <laughs> Terry, Frank, and Mark and a couple more lines at 602-277-5827. Let's go with Terry in Phoenix. He's got a 2000 Chevrolet S10. How can we help you, Terry? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, my S10 is always, uh, uh, and I've had it since it's new, I just uh, bumped, the, bumped the key and it would start right up maybe one or two revolutions and it'd start up and uh it's been doing fine and then all of a sudden uh one day i I tried to start it and it was a little bit of a hard start and i said hmm and uh that happened another time then it was fine for a while now it won't start at all went out one morning and turned the key and i could grind it till santa claus comes down and it it wouldn't start hmm Maybe Santa Claus will show up and fix it for you on the Christmas Eve, <laughs> but I doubt it. So it just cranks and cranks and cranks, probably acts like it's out of gas. That's what you mean, right? No. Well, you know, I've, I've been around engines all my life, and I'm 60, 73 years old, so I, I've been pulling on wrenches a while. I checked it all out. It's It's got fuel pressure. It's got uh, fuel. It's got uh, spark. Uh, How much fuel pressure does it have? You said it's got fuel pressure. Did you? Put yeah, a gauge it's got on it? sixty pounds. But it would. It, I mean, even if it had to pump up, it would still start eventually. I would think. Well, and that, I'm thinking, Dave, that's got that vortex system, and those do require that that sixty pounds of sixty pounds of fuel pressure. You got spark. You got yeah, you got, got spark. compression. You know, so I'm thinking. Yeah, good compression. Yeah, it's a it's a goer. And it'll just crank and crank and crank. And you, but you did say you do have spark, right? Yes. Okay. So the next thing we need to find out, I mean, do now all that stuff, we have to have spark. We have to have fuel. We've got to have compression. But now we need it to be synchronized. It's all got to be on time. You, you just can't have spark sparking and fuel fueling and, and things uh, spinning and not have it on time and synchronized. So, But just because we have fuel pressure, doesn't mean we have fuel actually squirting out of the fuel injector itself. Got to make sure that's um, working. You've got to make sure, you know, and that's picking up off of a cam sensor possibly. Um, so that one's going to need to get in. I mean, uh, he sounds pretty handy dandy if he's got his fuel pressure gauge. Maybe you have a scan tool. If you've got a, a cheap scan tool, what I'd be looking at is maybe cranking the engine and watching if there's an RPM signal on that or if the tachometer is moving. That's a, one of our little tricks. At least we know maybe the crankshaft sensor's working. Yeah, we got to know that we got an injector pulse. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, so there's some more testing that needs to be done on that one, Terry. So good luck. And, and uh, you know, if you just can't get it to the point where, you, where, where you know, you've reached what you're capable of doing and you're looking for a shop, you can find one at BumperToBumperRadio.com if you don't have one. Thanks for the call, Terry. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Frank in Scottsdale. He's got a 2003 Chevrolet Tahoe. How can we help you, Frank? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Just a couple of uh, quick uh, cosmetic questions. Uh, on my Tahoe on the dash, um, I don't know if it's rubberized paint or whatever, but it's starting to come apart, come off, actually. And you can actually see just a, just a black-type dashboard. Is there some type of finish that you can put back over that, or how does that work? 
I think an upholstery guy is the only guy who's going to be able to answer that question no, for you. Gosh, I wish I had Pascal on the line. Yeah. Send me a message, Pascal, if you're listening. Those dashes, there was a problem in certain years of those GM cars, and a lot of them were peeling. Some of it was a friend of mine's brand new and peeled because they were putting armor on the dash, and that lifted that petroleum in the armor all lifted that code off of there. So you you could get a dash mat. And hide it, but uh, you know, dash mat's not so good. But really, quite honestly, I don't think the replacement of that dash cover is too horribly expensive. Right. So. You know, Frank, <clears throat> if you send us an email at bumper to bumper com, I'll put you in touch with somebody that uh, can can help you out with that question. You know, that deals with it every day. Mm-hmm. It's going to be an interior guy more than likely, um, or re- even just a little bit of research on it. We've replaced own. one or two of them a while ago, and that's why I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I just don't have the exact information on it, but it's a common problem. For sure. Thanks for the call, Frank. 602-277-5827. You know, Christmas time is coming up, Matt, and, uh, you know, I think we're going to be talking today about some gifts for the uh, mm-hmm. the me- mechanic in your life. Uh, you know, there's there's some good gift ideas that uh, maybe will bring well, up our game a little bit from last year. I mean, last year we had mechanics gloves. This year we gotta yeah. we got to bring it up. Maybe some uh, decor for the mechanic in your life. Some pretty decor would certainly help. Such so. as? Oh, well, I'm going to have a list in oh, the third segment. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just, oh you're coming up I'm with just a list. Le- yeah, I'm leaning into it. We're going to come ah, up with something quick, man. Ah. We're going to have to bang this thing out. So, I think of what I would want. Hmm. I don't know. I'm hard to shop know. for. My wife's like, if you want it, you just go buy it, you know? So. I, I'm getting my Christmas present in advance. I'm getting some new cabinets put in my garage on Tuesday. So that's that's my gift to myself. You know, I don't even have, like, I have this little bag of tools at my house. I, I, I don't have anything at my house. I can't. i got to go to the neighbor and say, hey, can I borrow a screwdriver? I'm changing a light you switch. You know, I kind of don't want any tools at the house because then I actually have to do something at the house. Right, right. <laughs> or else somebody will come over and borrow them. <laughs> you know, that's the other problem. But you know, I'm starting to put together a restore a little car, a little hobby, so I want to get my little workshop area fixed up. So that's what uh, my gift to myself is. But we can come up with something for the for the car guy. Heck, you don't have to be the car guy to get car gifts. I know of, that's uh, true too. a lot of uh, things that are just a little bit better uh, of a gift for the car than you might just pull off the average shelf. So when we come back, we're going to take more phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And then you're going to get the top 10 Christmas gifts for the mechanic in your life, as by Dave Riccio. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTAR car guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Your reputation is everything, is what our parents told us, and they were right. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Auto Body Salon. Since 1973, we've been the go-to for collision repair for thousands of Valley car owners for good reason. And thankfully, our customers have rewarded us with raving reviews. Don't just take my word for it. Check us out on BumperToBumperRadio.com or, for that matter, any of the major independent review sites like Yelp and CarWise.com where we earn a five-star rating or the BBB where we have an A+. At Campus Auto Body Salon, getting your vehicle back to pre accident condition, both in appearance and structural integrity, is our top priority, not cutting corners for the insurance company. Get your repair done right. Arizona law allows you to choose your repair facility, so we invite you to check us out and see why our reviews are so strong. When you've had an accident, make your first call the right call to Campus Auto Body Salon. Check us out online at CampusBodySalon.com. Life's good news. Often comes a little bad news, right? Hi, Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission and co-host of Bumper to Bumper Radio. Car repair seems to follow that same trend. The good news? Transmissions are lasting twice as long as they used to. The bad news? They can cost as much as $1,000 more than you might remember. So if you're going to have to spend some money on a new transmission, you want to be sure you really need it. And if you do, that it's done right at a fair price. For over 45 years, Tri-City Transmission has built a reputation for having the experience and expertise to properly diagnose and repair your transmission without costly overhaul or replacement. If we do have to recommend a major transmission repair, you can be assured you're getting an honest recommendation and a job done right at a fair price. I guarantee it. Check us out online at TriCityTransmission.com. That's TriCityTransmission.com. TriCityTransmission.com. Arizona's news station. News station. 
KTAR on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic now. KTAR News time is 11.30. I'm Nailea Leon. Mick Mulvaney will be the new chief of staff. President Trump tweeted yesterday that Mulvaney has done an outstanding job in his administration and will take over next year. He will replace John Kelly. A federal judge in Texas has ruled that the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, is unconstitutional. The action was celebrated by President Trump, but Democrats are vowing to fight the ruling. Democrats are gearing up to challenge a new federal court ruling that strikes down the Affordable Care Act as unconstitutional. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal spoke to ABC News. This decision is an aberration, isolated decision by one federal district court judge. It by no means is the end result. There'll be a lot of appeals. Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi called the court ruling absurd and vowed to bolster the health care law in the new Congress. Jordan Phelps, ABC News, the White House. Now let's get a check on traffic. Here's Mike Daniels in the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center. We got a crash in North Valley at 16th Street and Beardsley. You're wrecking Glendale, 83rd Avenue and Bell. And still working at wreck at Lower Buckeye Road and 88th Avenue. This is what brought to you by Smokey's Garage Door. Is your garage door squeaking, rattling, or just not working? The pros at Smokey's Garage Door will get you back on track fast. For free estimates and same-day service available, just click SmokeysGarageDoor.com. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. KTR weather for the Valley. Chilly morning today is 59 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Later on this afternoon, we will see it go up to 73 degrees. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with a high of 74. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Nailea Leon on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Martha Maurer here, KTAR News Director. As I reflect on the incredible year we've had for news, I'm reminded that it's you, our listeners, who take the time out of your day to tune in, to get informed and entertained. Thanks for making us Arizona's news station. Happy holidays and cheers to an even better 2019. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. What do Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, and Cameron Champ have in common? They all played in the Patriot All-America Invitational at the Wigwam Resort during their college careers. See Golf Stars of Tomorrow at the 2018 Patriot All-America, December 29th through the 31st at the Wigwam in Litchfield Park, just 20 minutes west of downtown Phoenix. Golfers in the Patriot All-America play in honor of fallen soldiers. This unique tournament is free to attend and is your chance to see golf's future stars while honoring our military heroes. For more information, visit PatriotAllAmerica.com. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. 
For those of you who don't know and are just tuning in for the first time, what is Bumper to Bumper Radio? Well, it is a show designed to help you with your car, to put you in the know, uh, to help you with any questions you might have. The other thing Bumper to Bumper Radio is, there's a website of shops that support this show, Bumper to Bumper Radio.com. And these are sh- these are shops. Uh, it's not every shop in town. There's only, it's a list of 25 good shops all over the valley that are places that Matt and I would gladly send you to. Carte Blanche, go here. They'll do a great job for you. And one of the shops that uh, is is uh, top of my mind right now because I visited them last week for a set of tires is SNS Tire. Uh, and they've got three locations out in the West Valley. But it is a family-run tire shop. But the thing about the family-run tire shop, it's not like family-run like mom and pop, like they're not in the tire business. These guys are in the tire business. And... <clears throat> I did a little bit of pricing and checking and this and that and the other. I didn't just car blanche go to SNS Tire because I want to see how they stood up to everything else. And I called around and really I had the best, uh, when I called on the phone, the best response. Then I called on the phone. This is Dave from Bumper to Bumper. I said, hey, I'd like to get some tires from my wife's Jeep Grand Cherokee. And the person on the phone walked me through it, picked it out. I had pricing. I had an appointment. I got in and out, and it was great. It was a great experience. And my wife just yesterday, she said, I just... Today I was driving the car. I, it just totally feels different to have a good set of tires on the car. You know, Dave, and what you said about SNS Tire, family owned. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something. Everything is owned by some family somewhere. I mean, you know, Apple is owned by a whole bunch of families. Those are called shareholders. But <laughs> SNS Tire, when you go there, one of the the sons of the original um, founder founder are working there. Their children are working there. That is a family business. They're involved. It's one or two phone calls. If you had something go haywire, you're talking to a family member. I saw an ad for something family owned. They have 27 locations. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Some okay. family. Yeah. Right. Some families getting fat cat off of that. You know, they probably haven't been to one of the 27 locations in a year. That's. A little bit difference between family owned, if you know what I'm saying, right? Right. It's a little overused, but to S and S. And many of the shops on Bumper to Bumper are truly family-owned and operated is the key. For sure. And we've got Joseph, Robert, Mark, Jacob, and one coming through. I did want to look. I looked at a couple of these texts. I've got Derek in Peoria. He's got a 1999 Dodge Ram 1500, 5.2 liter. It's got 215,000 miles on it. He says it runs great. Uh, he did go through it and change all the fluids. He just bought the vehicle. And he says there's there's kind of a crackling noise when he gets out of the car, and he's wondering what that's all about. And without hearing it, I can only I can only make a, a guess. And I would suspect, you know, as your as your engine heats up and cools down, there's a lot of expansion and contraction, and you get metal popping. And specifically, the exhaust manifolds when they cool, you're going to get some crackling out of those. So that would be my guess there. You know, sometimes you get cooling systems that are gargle. You know, Matt, if you're kind of familiar with that, if it, there's some air pockets, that kind of thing. But yeah. I'm going to go with the uh, expansion and contraction. Or the air conditioning, different kind of noise, but air conditioning is high pressure, low pressure. Once mm-hmm. it's turned equalize. off, the pressure's equalized. So, yeah, that, that is another possibility. Hey, one more text message since we're, since we're on the text message uh, program right now. I have a 2006 Honda Element, 170,000 miles. Checking giant was on with a... P0300 and P0304. Well, those are misfire codes. Mm -hmm. When I talk about killing the little kitty cat Mm -hmm. that we've been talking about, those are the ones that will ruin your catalytic converter. A P0300 is a random misfire. The computer knows the engine's misfiring. It's random multiple. It can't quite detect it, but it knows something's going haywire in the car. 304 means it's a misfire on it's so cylinder gross number. we even know what it we is we know yeah. it's on cylinder number four but he's already replaced all the coils and all the plugs that's the easy stuff mm-hmm. you know and and uh run sluggish in the morning and shuts off often what more can i do mm-hmm. you know I what i'm thinking is going on i, I think we're not we're not adjusting have, valves right right i'm mm-hmm. first thing i'm going to do in that car is i'm going to be checking for a valve adjustment Need to make sure the valves are adjusted tight. If they're too tight, they're going to be opening, opening too early, not holding pressure in or letting exhaust gases out too soon. If they're loose, there might be a little noisy. You might have that. 
rattling noise while the engine's running, and, and that's bad too. So that's the first thing I'm looking at, and then maybe some engine decarbing or some some fuel injection system cleanup. But my money's on a valve adjustment. Mine is too. And for all you Honda owners out there, your car still needs valve adjustments, so uh, don't skip it because if this one went too long, there might be a burnt valve in there. It doesn't sound cheap. I'm pretty sure it's not. Anyway, let's go with Mark in Mesa. He's got a 2007, it looks like, GMC Yukon. How can we help you, Mark? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. How you doing? Uh, great. Hey, um, this morning I was idling for about, I was in there for about 15 minutes, and I noticed it was, you know, r- r- running a little rough, and then my uh, stabilization light came on for the stabilization control. And then said service you know, st- stabilization control off, and then it, then it scrolled uh, stabilization tr- uh, service stabilization control, and then st- service uh, traction control. But ever since then, ever since I've been driving, nothing. It's been fine. So, so all this happened while you were sitting at idle. Yeah, for yes, yeah, I was sitting there for about 10, 15 minutes. I just I noticed it was seemed like it was idling a little rough. And then those uh, uh, stabiliz- stabilization and the uh, traction control uh, lights came on and saying service those systems. And no check but, in, but no check engine light or anything like that. No, hmm. nothing. Dave. Well, I mean, the things that come to mind for me with you know stability control or anti-lock brakes, uh, traction control, anything like that. Uh, I start thinking of the system that's involved, and it, it really works a lot off of a steering angle sensor, you know, uh, sometimes that can come up, and then uh, speed sensors at the wheels. I mean, those are going to be the main components of that system and how it works. And then there's going to be, you know, for the traction control, I'm sorry, for the ABS. And he didn't, I don't think he said ABS. but Well, was, yeah, but the, the thing is he was sitting in idle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that's in that era where those electronic brake controllers mm-hmm. will fail. And, they, you know, they have bad solder joints in them, so they can a lot you can buy a new one or a lot of times we send them out to a company that can clean them up and go re- redo all those all those solder joints you know that's underneath the car it's getting splashed on in there even mm-hmm. though they're supposed to be sealed some up some corrosion yeah you know they they take some abuse but i but that's very odd for that to happen uh, at a car uh, for that type of system to illuminate a failure sitting still that's why i'm thinking it's more of a the heartbeat of the system, so to speak, the controller or something like that. And the way we're going to diagnose that, we're going to plug into it. The fact that those lights came on means there's going to be an error message stored in the computer. Not always because computers go bad. That happens. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's the real problem. But what I'm saying is we're going to plug into it and see what the codes are. And in some of those systems can be a little, you know, I don't want to oversimplify them, but they're not super complicated. Right. But, uh, you know, when you got a bad computer, a little harder to diagnose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So. For sure. So uh, thanks so much for the call, 602-277-5827. I'm going to go with Robert in Phoenix. He's got a 2008 uh, Dodge. What model Dodge do you have, Robert? It's uh, 1500. Okay, 1500. How can we help you with your Dodge? Okay, it idle, it like and I put my scanner on it. It doesn't say anything, no misfire, nothing. But it it ticks just the idle. Wait a minute. You mean that computer? You don't just plug it in and it didn't tell you what's wrong with the car? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> say anything. I'm a little being a little facetious because that's you know that's what the customers say a lot of times. Well, don't you just plug it in? It tells you what's wrong, right? So yeah, it's so. Positive. So tick 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 rapid. Uh, you you uh, accelerate the engine, rise the RPM a little bit. Is it? Does the tick come up with it? It goes away. It goes away. Mm. Hmm. Oil pressure maybe. I'm thinking a little, oil pressure, maybe, yeah. Maybe got a little oil pressure, yeah, just a, a little low maybe at at, at idle. Uh, perhaps you've got a lifter that's just on the verge of uh, failure, causing that tick. Um, does it sound like that's it's kind of what I was thinking, but. Okay. Yeah, it's been doing it since day one, and uh, I've had it for two years now. Okay. And it's only have it only has a hundred and five thousand miles on it. Um. Well, I, if you're pretty confident it's coming from the engine, and you know what I would, if that was happening in my shop, number one, we're probably just going to pull the belts off the car. We want to take anything else that's rotating 
out of the out of the system. So we pop the serpentine belt off. We're going to eliminate the alternator, the air conditioning, the idler bearings, anything. Run the engine for a minute or two, and okay. if it's not there, then we then we're pretty sure it's in the engine. Now, after that is when you need to have some experience. We're probably going to maybe isolate it to one side of the engine, pull a valve cover off, Dave, and and you can go in and feel. Maybe there's just one rocker that's loose. You know, they're not all going to be the same, but you might be able to find it that way. But finding it's only the first part of it. Then if you've got it halfway apart and you need to go replace a lifter, you might want to see what that is, what it entails to repair that before you dig in if you're not the type that is going to do the repair. And the subjectivity to the noise thing is that, you know, if I listen to a vehicle and it's got a little this noise or that noise, I may listen to it and say, hey, I'm not concerned about that. You know, some, some vehicles, there's some... Engines just have inherent noises in them, and I'm not losing sleep over it. So if I'm hearing it, you know, if it's like nails down a chalkboard, we got to do something with that. But that the technician ear comes into play. You know, some some older technicians can't hear so well, but I mean, it really plays a part. You know, am I concerned about it? Because a lot of these vehicles anymore, you start them up and they're they're noisy off the dealership lot when well, you start them up in but, the morning. Well, yeah, but you get sometimes we say, oh, they're noisy. Well, that's the sound of the fuel injectors. These new fuel injectors are, are noisy. noisy. right? So you have to know the noise you're listening for. I had a customer with an Audi not too long ago, V6. This thing's got 32 valves. It's starting to tick a little bit. Ah, don't worry about it. Well, that tick slowly got worse, and what it was, one of the rocker or one of the hydraulic lifters was going bad. So then shortly later, you know what happened? That they, That tick got worse. And bam, it ate a valve, you know. So, so it was a several thousand dollar repair that maybe could have been fixed for a couple thousand in advance. We just ignored it for too long because it's just a little tick. Just no a little tick. And it depends on who tells you because some people don't have a trained ear and they're telling you, "No, nah, don't worry about it." That's just me saying I don't know anything about it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Exactly. some people don't know what they don't know. But thanks for the call, Robert. We've got Joseph and Dave. We're going to get you when we come back, and we're going to get to those Christmas ideas. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. After a car accident, make your first call the right call to Campus Auto Body Salon. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved, five-star rated with Yelp, CarWise.com, and A-plus rated by the BBB. The best care in collision repair since 1973. Check us out at CampusBodySalon.com. The perfect holiday stay and play is at JW Marriott Camelback Inn this season. Come enjoy their holiday casitas and Rita's package with accommodations in one of their resort casitas guest rooms and two specialty handcrafted margaritas per night starting at $1.99 per night. You'll also receive a $50 resort credit per night good towards food, beverage, spa, golf, tennis, and resort shops. And of course, you'll want to play the renowned Ambiente or Padre courses at Camelback Golf Club. Book online at camelbackin.com promo code ES1 for reservations today. There is nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock here for Kurt's Auto Repair. I brought my nephew and general manager, Jeff Rock, to help spread the word. Thanks, pups. Yep, the more things change, the more they stay the same at Kurt's. Family owned and operated, our ASE Master Techs and Family Ethics have earned us a perfect Better Business Bureau record for over 30 years. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Hi, Kevin Rowe from I-17 Collision in Phoenix. If the bad news is you've had an accident, the good news is that with one easy click on bumper to bumperradiocom you have the best collision, body, and paint shops to help you get back on the road quickly, safely, and with a repair you can trust. Dave Lindgren here from First Class Auto Body in Scottsdale. Don't be fooled. Some insurance companies try to convince you that you must use their approved shops for your repairs. Not true. Arizona law allows you to choose the facility that's right for you. And I'm Leo Petrozella from Campus Body Salon in Tempe. Having an accident is stressful enough. Dealing with the repair process shouldn't be. Appearance is important, but it's critical that structural integrity and safety are top priority. Three convenient locations and one united team. With almost 120 years of experience and expertise between us, we are solely focused on taking care of you while working with your insurance company. The Collision Team at bumper to bumper radiocom All right, you chipmunks. Ready to sing your song? I say we are. Yeah, let's sing it now. Okay, Simon? Okay. Okay, Theodore? Okay. Okay, Alvin? Alvin? I almost completely forgot about Alvin and the chipmunks. 
I love Saturday morning. I couldn't wait to see those guys. I remember getting, at some point, it had to be the early 70s, getting this record. You know, the the record, it was, a, oh, I, I can still picture you, know, fold it open. Maybe it might have been a two-hour little set. And my oh, parents, yeah. They played it on the, you know, my dad had the turntable and stuff. <laughs> Love me some timeless, shit, timeless. For sure. All right. Well, we've got Joseph and we've got Dave, and we got to get to these Christmas gifts. And I got to tell you, I'm completely unprepared for this. I just thought we would talk about it. But uh, Carrie, Carrie, help me out with a list of gifts. And right there on the top of the list, and I don't think you need to go any further than this, is the timing chain clock. You know? Don't you want a timing chain clock in your living room, Matt? No, I don't. <laughs> no, thank you. It is cool. There was a time in my life I probably would have wanted a, in your Yeah, life. I would have wanted a timing chain clock, but I'm past that. But you know what would be cool is that big rearview mirror that you put on the windshield that goes from from the right window uh, uh, to the left window, and you have like no blind spots. It's a wink mirror. It, so they call it a wink mirror. They were. I'm going to oh, get one for my yeah. 914. Okay. Actually. All they're, right. They're there, you uh, Edith, there you go, Edith. There you go. It's yeah. all done. There's a, there's a wink mirror. But what else for the mechanic in your life, Dave? I'm not thinking about the mechanic. I mean, if if we're if hey, as the shop owner, if you, if you want to bring all the mechanics something, hey, that, come on down. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. We was always yeah, open. curb curb feelers. Are those still a thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I, the first time I saw him as a kid. I asked my dad. I go, "What's that?" You know, well, he goes, that's a senior moment, son. Some that's people when the, might, hey, you know, I'm surprised that's not standard equipment on some cars now. You see some of these cars going uh, out with what we call curb rash. Oh, yeah. Uh, and those, the wheels aren't cheap. You know, you start scraping those. I'd, I'd much rather scrap a hubcap on a caddy in the 70s than a, mm-hmm. than a nice aluminum wheel on a newer car in the in, in 2019, that's for sure. But, you know, I'm you're thinking about car gifts for the mechanic in your life. I'm thinking about car gifts for the car owner in your life. Oh, yeah. And uh, I like the car wash kit. The car wash kit, you know, depending on what you want to spend, you can spend it. I'll tell you one thing. You can spend 100 bucks pretty easy. You go oh, down yeah. to Napa, go to Napa, and they've got all the stuff there. They've got the, the leather cleaner and the conditioner, and you want to get the good soap because the soap underneath the kitchen counter, that rips all the wax and protection on the car. So I put together a kit not too long ago. You want to wash mitt. Mm-hmm. You want something to scrub the bugs off the front end, but you want a different brush for scrubbing the tires and wheels, and and maybe one like you use to clean the wine glass. You got to get down in there to to clean the in the in the spokes. And no Brillo pads on the paint. No. Just don't do it. And a little bit of spray wax. You're not going to wax the whole car all the time. Maybe get some bird droppings. You know, you just clean that up a little mm-hmm. bit. But the thing that I like, you know, I have this crappy old sunshade. From Costco, and it doesn't fit the window right, and, and they never do, and they never do. And then you, and then you buy the one that's pre-made, and it's generic. But you know, Dash Mat—that's a company that's been in Arizona forever. They used to have the carpet Dash Mats. Mm-hmm. They make custom for your car. So if you've got a Mustang, it is made exactly to fit. I got one for your, my car. I got one yeah. for my wife's car. They are yeah. fantastic yeah, because exactly. those those ones that are not custom, you can put an eye out with those things. <laughs> yeah. So you horrible. want one that fits. You know, yeah, so, for check, sure. so check out Dash Matt and, and, and maybe take a look at that for your custom fit window cover and keep your the interior of your car cool when the sun comes back. Well, you're going to have to tune in next week for the other seven that we didn't come up with. So we're going to go with <laughs> Joseph in Glendale. He's got a 1991, looks like a Chrysler New Yorker Fifth Avenue. How can we help you, Joseph? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Uh, my odometer has stopped running, and I took it to AAA, and uh, they checked it out, all the wires out and the sensors and everything, and they said that the, there's... You need somebody to work on the odometer, but they don't know anybody to work on it. Can you help me out? Yeah. Yeah, I can do something like that, I think. Uh, you're in uh, you're in Glendale, so I can't think of what's over that direction. Dave's car care. Dave, yeah. Dave Denman, 51st Avenue in, in, in Peoria. See, did I do that right? Yeah, 51st, yeah, 51st Avenue, Avenue in Peoria. Peoria. Dave's right there in the corner. He's not going to fix. That's the difference between shops that fix cars and shops that are there to solve problems for you. Some shops are there just to fix the easy stuff. Take your money because we know what we're doing real quick and we can move on to the next car. The other kind of shop is the shop like the bumper to bumper guys. 
You're going to go to someone like Dave Dimon. He doesn't fix that speedometer, but he's got the guy he's going to take that thing out to. He's going to take it over to the speedo shop for you. They're going to fix it, and they're going to put it back in the car. Or he's going to get a used one because he's got the ability to put it in reprogram it. And those are the solutions that that's the kind of shop you want to choose uh, that can take care of all of those things for you. Hey, Joseph, you can find uh, Dave's car care at bumper to bumper com. Give Dave a call. They'll be able to help you out with that. Let's go with Dave in Phoenix. He's got a 2011 Nissan Pathfinder. How can we help you, Dave? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Uh, guys, love the show. And Thank you. Uh, actually, correction, it's a 2012 Nissan Pathfinder. I'm thinking about buying it from a private party. And I was just wondering if there's anything I should be looking for or any mm. concerns. It's a four by four. Yeah, the, a couple things that come up for me because I'm in the transmission business, so I know this very well. A lot of those Nissans have issues with glycol poisoning into the transmission, and it doesn't show up right away. It takes some time. So that's that's one of the concerns that I run to that. And then also, those also have a lot of timing chain issues. So maybe that's a question if you're buying one from a private party. You know, hey, has the timing chain been addressed at this point? You've seen that one come up how many yeah, times? Yeah, and on the radiator issue, though, Dave, let's just, I mean, I'm talking to Dave Riccio, not Dave the caller, but Dave, if he buys that car, now, you know, that guy might have got some bad news that he's got some glycol in his in transmission fluid, so now he's got it for sale. Is that a symptom yeah. that's going to show up? Do you need to drive that for 30 miles yeah, on you that? You do. Test? You do, as a matter of fact. The, the glycol poisoning doesn't isn't real obvious in, in, in a lot of cases. Now, it's been going on for a while, yeah, then it does show up. But, uh, you know, those those Nissans tend to hold their value pretty well, so they're not, you know, even if you're buying it used, it's it's not a cheap vehicle. It may be worth a trip. I mean, if, if you Google Nissan radiator transmission problems, you're going to find a plethora of stuff. That's one of those things you Google that is for real. You know, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. So you want to buy one prior to or after it's been repaired already. And if you do buy it and it hasn't happened, you can prevent it from happening by bypassing that radiator. And that's what I was going to say. So, Dave, if you go go get your pre-purchase inspection in that car and get it checked out. But what, what, what Riccio here is talking about is the radiators fail and it allows a little bit of antifreeze to get into the transmission that will instantly ruin the transmission. So after you've purchased this car, what you need to do is make an appointment with Tri-City Transmission and get down there and get that internal cooler bypassed with an external transmission cooler and you can avoid having that problem altogether. A few hundred bucks in advance is going to save you a couple thousand dollars later no, it, on that used car. It's not cheap. They put the computer inside that transmission, so it adds a lot of money to the to the repair yeah. bill if you got to do one. So, Thanks for joining us. If you're looking for a friendly, honest, competent shop, you can find them at bumper to bumper radiocom And if you're on our website, uh, be sure to like us, uh, like the Bumper to Bumper family on Facebook. Uh, you know, and a couple things. I put a big sticker on the back of my car that says, Quit texting and just drive. And I can't say i got a perfect record of never texting and driving, but it makes me cognizant, you know, because I will be a hypocrite if I, uh, I'm i sitting there texting and driving. I will tell you, all those bumper stickers on your window are looking a little annoying to me, though. It is getting, it is getting kind of tacky. So anyhow, we'll see you next week.